It is awards time for ISMA and MSS as the award winners were now announced just a little while ago. A guy we've chatted with, uh, not just on the phone, but I got a chance to meet him at the track uh, last season. There's a guy who won three awards. Mark Samet finished seventh in the point standings this year with the ISMA MSS Tour. Had a win at Jennerstown. You'll see that picture in the next uh, interview that we put up. But he won three awards. Not only did he win Hard Charger, Crew of the Year, he also won Sportsman of the Year. So what we're going to do in this first interview is we're going to combine the first two. So we're going to talk about becoming the hard charger and, of course, the crew, which is an interesting story when you get down to it. You'll see what we mean here in just a few moments. So let's head up to north of the border, London, Ontario, Canada, kind of in between Detroit uh, and Toronto. Uh, no snow up there right now, but the big thing, this was recorded on Monday night, just a little past eight. It is birthday number 51 for Mark Samet. So I guess before we do anything else, happy birthday, Mark. Well, thank you. Did we do anything special for our birthday today? No, not really. Had supper with the family and uh, some cupcakes, and that was about it. Did get a nice gift, you told me. Oh, yeah, uh, I work radio, so what could be better than that? So, yeah, but isn't it supposed to be something you don't need, I guess, for a birthday gift, or is that fine as it is? Huh? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Depends how you want to look at it, I guess. Well, I would say get something you wouldn't buy yourself, so I guess that does fit exactly. into that category. Yep. So how was the season? Uh, told me you had the win at Jennerstown. How else did it go? Well, for the most part, pretty good. I mean, we started out really well. We obviously, we won in Jennerstown. We ran really good the next couple of Oswego shows. And then, uh, hey, let's be honest, the middle of the season, Berlin and Lorraine, we struggled a little bit, had some trouble. We ran... We ran really good at Sandusky, but unfortunately, I can't qualify, and we had to start come from like 15th and 16th both nights, and I think we ended up 5th and 6th. So we actually were running really good, just we didn't have a very good starting spot, so it's a long way through. But uh, yeah, for the most part, it was a good season. Uh, you know, we only had one little issue with uh, an injector line coming apart at Oswego, and I got tangled up a little bit on the Friday night of the rain. But other than that, the car finished uh, finished every race. So anyhow. So. So I guess that explains the reason for the Hard Charger Award, is that and not necessarily that you were coming forward, but we just didn't get off to a good start more than anything else, huh? Uh, exactly. Basically, that means I can't qualify, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in those situations? Because a lot of times guys will tell me they know they have a good car, but maybe they just miss it or something in qualifying. How do you not see all those cars in front of you and go, oh, no, I'm never going to get there? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, for whatever reason, you know, it's been ongoing that I can't seem to qualify. I don't know if it's me or the car or we don't do something right for qualifying or what it is. But, uh, you know, most guys will gain half to three-quarters of a second between practice and time trials. I might, or I might gain two-tenths. So, anyhow, it's uh, one of those things. But, uh, yeah, but, I mean, usually once the race gets going, we're fine. And, uh, you know, we can get through. Just like I said, some nights when you don't make the invert, it's a long ways to come through. So. Well, I mean, so as we do well in the heat, or is it mostly more towards the feature that we really start moving forward? No, in the in the feature more so. Okay. So, again, what, I guess I'll go back to the same question. So when you're there and you're, and you're seeing 12, 14 cars in front of you, is it just as simple as the old one at a time, or do you have to sometimes go, well, I better make this move now? No, you got to pick them off one at a time, and you got to have the car to do it, too. Even some nights you start back there and you stay back there. But uh, anyhow, but, yeah, no, when the car's right, you can – you know, usually I enjoy the longer races a little better that way, so you can kind of pick them off and work your way through and try not to beat the thing up as you're coming up. So, mm-hmm. Well, and also it's it's lap times and falling off. Did you tend not to fall off as much as some of the other teams in a lot of races? Yeah, I would say so. so I can usually run close to the speed I was going at the start of the race at the end, which there's a lot of guys that don't do that. So usually towards the end of the ra- race I do I do come on a little stronger than I do, you know, through the start of the middle part sort of thing. So, mm-hmm. And so that helped at Sandusky quite a bit, but uh, so still we got up to fifth and it was still too little too late, I think. So. Gotcha. Okay. Well, the other thing, too, is um, a lot of guys can drive too fast those first few laps. You do have to make sure you pace yourself to save your tires, don't you? Yeah, and I'm probably the opposite. I probably don't go fast enough in the first few laps. Well, long as, and also can't get yourself in trouble. That's the other thing about charging to the front. Oh, for sure, and even starting at the back, there's more chance for something to happen, whether, you know, you're just, you know, a lot better chance of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, mm-hmm. and uh, anyways, it is what it is, and said hopefully maybe next year we can improve that a little bit. Right, and not have to be the hard charger, because you'll start a little <laughs> more towards the front, so. There you go. Is there one or two races that jump out where that just, that happened just like you said, where we were like 15th or something and ended up having like a top five or something like that? Yeah, definitely both the Sandusky races. 
and uh, that was probably that was probably the biggest one. Even Jennerstown, we made the invert, but we got started a little ways back. And it was Jennerstown was one of those nights that just everything fell in place. You know, past the cars at the right time, and then the cautions would come at the right time and stuff like that. So some nights is your night, and that was one of them. So uh, yeah, that was that was that. But I said probably the two nights at Sandusky were the were the biggest ones as far as qualifying terrible and working our way most of the way through. So. Okay, so that's our goal for next year is qualify a little better. Exactly. Gotcha. Of course, easier said than done, isn't it, Mark? <laughs> yep. <laughs> the other thing that we're talking here is crew of the year. And you told me you didn't necessarily have a big crew, but, boy, the guys that did show up worked real hard. Oh, yeah. And so we've, uh, I mean, we've had a great crew over the years. You know, some of them are getting a little bit older and other things are happening and stuff like that. But uh, all the same guys are still helping. They just, you know, maybe not around as much as they were at one time and stuff like that. But, uh no, it's uh, the guys that come over, they do a great job, and when we go to the races, we always have fun. So it says something to get that award so that the you know so the car completed the most laps of any car. So that, uh, that's oh, something for our, ourselves and the guys that work on it. So. No, you're right. I mean, if you did more laps than anybody else, that says not only did the crew do it at the racetrack, but they did it during the week, too. Exactly, exactly. So. Is that the toughest part? Because a lot of people tell me that a lot of people want to show up on race days, but maybe on Tuesday night, they, they're maybe not as interested in coming. Oh, no question, no question about it. I mean, I mean, anybody that owns a super knows for sure that uh, there's more work to do at home than there is at the racetrack, and that's where the races are won and lost most of the time. Mm-hmm. But then making the changes, or or you unload, and oh no, we got a problem. Would you tell me you had a bad injector one race? Yeah, I've uh, had a had a line go bad at a swing on us, and for whatever reason, obviously we missed it or whatever happened. But anyways, but. Uh, yeah, that was the uh, that was the only DNF we had, and then we got tangled up a little bit coming through the pack at Lorraine on the Friday night. That was the only other race we didn't finish. So. Okay, who are the people who helped you on the crew this year? Well, really, I mean, obviously, my father. He's been around since day one, and even as he's aging and his health's not 100, percent he's certainly uh, still giving it everything he can when he can, for sure. So, I mean, and wouldn't be doing any of this without him, for sure. And uh, oh, well, we got a whole bunch of other guys. We got uh, Brian Welch and Derek Wilson been helping us for years. Ryan Barlow's here a fair bit. He goes to most of the races. My father-in-law Rob Ford, he's been around for a long, long time. So well, those are the main guys. And then hey, this year, fortunately, when we were short, I could you know count on a couple guys. So Steve Lennox is one, and Dave Barney's another. And uh, yeah, so and there's, there's, I'm sure there's some I'm missing. Mike Stafford was another one that came out and helped us a few times. So, like I said, you, you know, got to thank the guys because you can't you can't run one of these cars by yourself. It's impossible. So, it must be fun to share it with your both your father and your father-in-law. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's funny. Sometimes we pull up to the border and they ask if we're related. Say, so actually, <laughs> we are. <laughs> <laughs> that make it a little easier. Uh, being oh, related? not necessarily. Not necessarily. Just okay. What's it like getting through the border now? Uh, is it easier coming into yeah, America or going back? Oh, coming back is harder, but okay. uh, so normally we don't have any issues. I mean, just okay. a few times this year there was a long, long wait. I mean, there was no issues once we got right. there, but it was a long wait to get through. And, uh, yeah, but uh, for the most part, it, we don't have a lot of problems for the number of times we cross. So. Well, I appreciate your time. I hope you had a great birthday. Make sure to come back, guys, because we're going to talk about the Sportsman of the Year Award, which he also won. We've got some interesting stories to share there because I think a lot of people think that it, it's a little different than, than what it actually is. So, uh, so Mark's going to stick on the line with me. We'll have that one up uh, probably in a little bit later this week. Mark, I appreciate your time, and I'm glad you had a happy birthday, sir. Thank you. Again, your hard charger and crew of the year awards going to Mark Samet and the Samet Racing Team for ISMA and MS, MSS excuse me, for 2023.